Absolutely, Karen, and it's difficult to see that there wouldn't be more violence today, especially considering this is the anniversary of the day that the Palestinians were really pushed out of that country, of their country, also known as the Nakba. Now, it's interesting, of course, to note that given the fact that we've seen so much cooperation over the last several years in particular, under the table, really, between Israel and these Gulf Arab states, there was, of course, a pushback initially on this decision that President Trump had made about moving that embassy to Jerusalem. We haven't heard too much about it since. Of course, this this is a region that has to keep their ear to the Arab street while at the same time dealing with the realities on the ground, which are, of course, that Israel and the United States are their ally when it comes to Iran. Now, let's listen in to some of the sound that we heard over the last 24 hours. The U.S. has kept pretty quiet on what's happening right now over in Israel. But we did hear, of course, from Israel's prime minister. He called the day glorious. Let's listen in. This is history. <laughs> President Trump. By recognizing history, you have made history. Today, the most, the embassy of the most powerful nation on earth, our greatest ally, the United States of America, today its embassy opened here. Now, for a country and a prime minister that for so many years now has seemed to get the optics really, really right when it comes to the message that they're really trying to send to the rest of the world, we've seen that really taper off in the last couple of years, particularly with what we saw yesterday with these very violent images juxtaposed with the setting there with uh, the president's daughter and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, of course, and his daughter, Ivanka, sitting there on the sidelines. We also saw in the audience people like the former Senator Joe Lieberman, who also, of course, was a vice presidential running mate to Al Gore several years ago, with a lot of high profile profile people in that audience. But whether or not this is going to actually play well globally, I mean, we've already heard an international outcry, and certainly from these European countries that for so many years now have been trying to pressure Israel as well. This can't be good news uh, for the administration in Tel Aviv. Let's listen in to what the Palestinians observer to the UN had to say. We condemn in the strongest term this uh, atrocity by the Israeli occupying forces uh, using uh, this massive uh, uh, firepower against civilians who have the right to demonstrate peacefully, and they have been demonstrating peacefully. We condemn this action in the strongest possible term. We demand that this action to be stopped immediately, and we want those responsible to be brought to justice from the Israeli side because this is not allowed under the provisions of international law. And of course, the violence that we're seeing there does play into the broader narrative of instability in the Middle East, though, of course, it's difficult to see how that will actually impact markets, at least in the short term. Certainly, the question, of course, going forward is with so much progress that seems to have been made between these Gulf Arab countries and the Trump administration, how damaging this is going to be uh, to their future plans, not just when we talk about uh, OPEC, non-OPEC agreements, of course, but also when we talk about the Iran nuclear deal and, of course, the security of these Gulf Arab countries within this context of this Shia crescent that what I'm bringing bringing up again and again, of course, with Tehran uh, to Damascus to Beirut. So a lot of questions, guys, on how this will actually impact things longer term. Hadley, if our viewers are watching um, and they're not familiar with the nuances like you are of the Middle East, my view, and they're watching from a distance, where is the biggest flashpoint going forward? I mean, we're looking at the horrendous death toll yesterday uh, and indeed looking at the Israel situation, one might think there. But is it, is it the Iran situation? Is it in Syria at the moment? Where is the biggest danger uh, for the world actually of this accelerating and exacerbating and getting out of hand? I think, Steve, you have to look at this in terms of the broad picture because there are so many flashpoints. I don't think there isn't just one. I mean, we've got what's happening in Israel today. We also had what happened yesterday in these Iraqi elections. Very few people really talking about this. You had Muqtada al-Sadr, a man that was on the U.S. most wanted list, of course, for several years, now in seemingly in, in conjunction with the Saudis. I mean, there's a lot of shifting of these movements, these tectonic shifts, I think, in terms of the geopolitics here. And I don't think it's just one flashpoint. I think it's a, a confluence of events. 
events I think that folks are going to really have to keep a closer eye on. I mean, this is the, the, we only have a 24-hour news cycle, but the fact that we weren't really focusing on what was happening in Iraq is a big, bigger question because, as you know, you know, we've interviewed now three or four times the Prime Minister of Iraq, Haider al-Abadi. You know, he's talked a lot about the economics of that country and about how they have to combat corruption and how dangerous that could be. Now, the question, of course, now is as they seem to be moving uh, less, uh, you know, further away from the Iranian camp, the Shia camp, and more into the hands of the Saudis, how that's going to really play out. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.